Hi, this is a quick video to demonstrate to you some of the sequential properties and also the memory storage properties of C. Um, I have in front of me a small program that I've written. Um, what I do is I declare and initialize, in other words, give values to two variables, A and B, both integers. Uh, by declaring them, some memory is allocated to a variable called A, some memory is allocated to a variable called B, and I give them values 1 and 2 respectively, and you will see what that does in memory in a few seconds. I also declare a variable C and a variable D, and they're of type float. They, they consume the same amount of memory as the A and B variables, but they're stored differently. Um, so for C I give a value, and for D I give a value. What I do then is I print out those values as they are stored in memory, and what you will see is inside this text there are is a percentage D and another percentage D and a percentage F and a percentage F and they respectively refer to the A, B, C and D at the end of the printf. So each one of them refers in order to the variables that I mentioned at the back here. What I do after the printout is just to set the value of A to 5 so that changes the memory location where A resides to 5 and I change C to 6.7 and then I just print out the values again. Very important all of this happens in sequence and you'll see that very clearly in a second and then I just have a, a prompt for the user. I print out to the user please enter a new value for A and I print out uh, or at least I do a scan if to get from the user what he wants A to turn into. Very important the ampersand A meaning this is where A is, that's the memory location of A. So go and put whatever the user entered into A. And the percentage D here just says A is of type integer. So whatever the user entered, interpret that as an integer and put it into A. Then I also have a prompt for the user to enter a value for C. And in this case, C is a float, so I use percentage F. And whatever the user types go into memory location where C resides, and it's interpreted as a float. And then I finally just print out the values again and return. So if I execute this code, you will see the value of A is equal to 1, B is 2, C is a half, D is 3 quarters, as I've initialized them. After that, I changed A and C. So you can see A changed and C changed. And then I prompt the user to enter a new value for A. So I now just enter a new value for A. So let's just make that 11. And for C, I make it 11.1. And you will see the values have changed um, according to that printout there. So the other thing that I just want to show you real quick is the debug functionality. So um, built into C, or at least into into uh, into this compiler, is a debug functionality. Um, MinGW provides this function, and you can debug the code. You can see there's a little bug there. So if you click on the bug, a whole new window opens, and this new window gives you a snapshot of what's going on in memory. On the right top top right here, you will see there's now four variables listed, their types and their values. At the given time and what that given time is you as you know each program starts from main and there's something called a, a, a instruction pointer that tells you where in the code it's at it's right there right now so you can step through your code now by pressing F6 I hope you can see that Jay. by pressing F6 or by going uh, there and clicking on step over. So that does the same thing. Uh, so if I press F6 now, I'm just going to expand this a, a bit and say something else. What you can also see is there's an extra uh, button here that lets you choose between source code and debug. So you can go into the different views. So if you get stuck, just change that. Right. Pressing F6 to continue, so step over. So I'm changing A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1. Initially, note that the values of all the variables are random. Whatever they were in memory, you can see that's just gibberish because they've not been assigned. 
But as soon as I then press F6 or click here, you'll see the value of A and B changes to 1 or 2. What you'll also see is if I do another one, you can see the values of C and D change to their respective values. And then I just print it out again. By the way, if I press F5, it'll go into the function, into the detail of, for example, the printf, and go through every micro step inside printf. Or um, yeah, in this case, A is equal to 5, there's nothing to go into, it'll just step over. So what you'll see is if I press F6 again now, the value of A changes to 5. If I press F6 again, the value of C changes to 6.6999981. And that's just the limitation of the number representation of a computer. Um, it can only, it uses a binary number system and it can't do 6.7 accurately. So I'll show you in a second what happens if we change, actually let's do that right now. If we change the type to double, that means use 8 bytes instead of 4. And I, um, what you will see is the values change as they did before. And that 0.5 and 0.75 I chose because the computer can accurately represent those. But this 6.7, even though it's more accurate now, you can see there's still a residual difference there. And that's just a quirk of a number system inside a PC.